small rivers come together and flow towards the sea. When the rivers are about to merge with the sea, strangely shaped reed colonies come into view. Beyond them lies a land of mystery, where the seawater ebbs and flows twice a day. This is a tidal flat, an amazing community of living things built by the reeds, the sea, and the mud. When the water ebbs out of the mud flat, numerous blue spotted mud hoppers show up, overrunning the muddy surface. This mud hopper comes out of a hole and rolls around in the wet mud to keep its scaleless skin from drying up. It can easily move around the flat thanks to its pectoral fins. Hungry after waiting six hours for the low tide, the fish starts feeding in its own peculiar way. The mud hopper fills up its cheeks with water. Then it uses the water to filter out the mud. What's left, usually phytoplankton, becomes its meal. Now fully fed, the mud hopper again heads for the water. It's looking to pick a fight with smaller mud hoppers. It spreads its fins and jumps about to intimidate its competitors and also to gain an edge in mating. Blue spotted mud hoppers spawn until September. Fertilized eggs hatch about 15 days later. Child rearing is left solely up to the male. This one's eyes protrude even more at the appearance of an intruder eyeing its abode. It spreads out its fins to scare away the trespasser. The mud hopper barely succeeds in defending its turf. But its relief is short-lived. Another male mud hopper challenges him. The newcomer opens up its mouth menacingly. The tidal flat is a fierce battleground for survival. But no matter how clever its camouflage or survival tactics may be, there is an enemy that must be avoided at all costs. The enemy is a mud hopper fisherman. He has to approach within 10 meters of his target. The fisherman even breathes slowly, lest he should scare away the ever alert mud hoppers. Tension runs high amid the silence. 발 빼는 소리만 나도 들어가 버려요. 그러니까 이제 짱뚜요고 이제 사람하고 이제 싸움이지 말하자면은 The mud hopper is known to be the most agile among the tidal flat creatures. The fisherman employs a unique technique to catch the mud hoppers, sweeping the flat with a baitless line. The fisherman throws out a line fitted with only a hook and in a flash snatches up a mud hopper. He never misses. He's so good that he can catch up to about 400 mud hoppers over the two or three hours of low tide. 
However, the fisherman never works past the set amount or time. He is well aware that he's part of the tidal flat community. Countless creatures live in harmony on the mudflat. Although instinct seems to guide all their actions, they don't live just to survive. These crustaceans busy feeding themselves from the mudflat are called Japanese ghost crabs. They're the flat's cleaning crew. They provide oxygen to the flat by burrowing tunnels, and they also keep the area clean by feeding on microalgae, one of the causes of red tide. The ghost crab's every action helps the tidal flat breathe. 자연의 정화 기능이거든요. 그러니까 갯벌이라는 공간은 그대로 놔두기만 하면 그곳에 살아가는 동물과 식물들이 조화를 이루면서 사람들이 육상에서 버린 그 오염물질, 유기물이라든지 그런 오염물질을 분해를 하기 때문에 심지어는 이제 그이 우리 인간이 만든 어떤 그 정화 시스템보다도 갯벌이 훨씬 더 우수하다라고 하는 것이 지금 정설이거든요. The tidal flat changes with the energy from all the activities of numerous life forms. Sand crabs are also a big contributor to the health of the mud flat. During their mating season in May and June, the crabs sport a vivid red hue. The sand crab is recognizable by its single large pincer, which is bigger than its body. The huge claw of a male sand crab indicates that his genes are strong and healthy. Sand crabs are known to be very watchful. It plays a special trick when it detects a threat. It uses its legs to loosen a chunk of mud and takes it to block the entrance to its home that can stretch down for up to a meter. It looks similar to the closing hatch on a submarine. More amazingly, the chunk of mud randomly taken from the flat fits the whole entrance perfectly. The tidal flat community suddenly becomes restless. When the tide comes in, most of the creatures retreat to their homes in the mud. But some head the opposite direction, towards the water. They are mud skippers. These air-breathing fish are gluttons, greedily feeding until the rising tide comes right up to their noses. These animals have developed their own survival tactics while protecting the mud flat. Several waterways carry the vestiges of land out to the sea. Sunchun Bay is the product of eons of mud accumulation. The mud has increased by one millimeter a year. Measuring more than 22 million square meters, Sunchun Bay is world famous for its abundance of life. Sunchun Bay's nickname, the Bedrock of Life, is derived partly from the vast colonies of reeds. The circular reed fields appear to have been drawn with a compass. The mystery of reed circles has not yet been solved. Very few people are aware of what goes on inside the reed fields. Carefully venturing out of the burrows are mudflat crabs. Their distinct odor resembles horse dung. Even among the mudflat crabs, there are some receiving special treatment. They are red sea crabs, a class two endangered species. The red sea crab, with two pincers as big as its body, is capable of tenaciously gripping its prey. Its legs are covered in stiff hair, just right for climbing up a reed stalk. Since red sea crabs breathe through their gills, 
They have to remain in moist places. They are voracious eaters, but their favorite food is young reed leaves. Now you understand why they won't leave the reed field. There are other rare life forms found only in Sunchan Bay. Halophytes, or salt plants, inhabit the areas bordering the sea and mud flat. Another fuzzy creature can be seen only in places with the right combination of mud and sand. It's the fiddler crab. This crustacean has a single pincer almost the size of its body. A male fiddler crab builds a round dome near its burrow and dances in front of it to woo a female. But it's easily spooked. It raises up its huge claw when threatened. The agitated behavior is just like that of a scared child. The reason fiddler crabs are not readily spotted on the tidal flat is because their habitats are limited and their number is dwindling fast due to coastal development projects. Time at the mud flat is set by the sun and the moon. The mysterious forces that move the tides twice a day originate from the moon. The moon exerts its influence more strongly at night pulling the seawater all the way to the inner edge of the flat. Even the smallest creatures living on the flat abide by the lunar schedule. Dal과 태양과 지구라고 하는 그들의 그 자연의 어떤 시간 관계, 힘 관계 그 시간 개념에 맞춰 가지고 개뿔 생물들은 이렇게 진화를 해온 거죠. People of the tidal flat also live by the flat's timetable. Said to live in two shifts, a fisherman heads out to the sea at tide time. His fish farm is located far out in the sea. The tide has filled his nets overnight with the mud flat's gifts. Among his catch, there is a fish species known for its nasty temperament. It's a bizarre looking prehistoric species called green eel goby. Known to live only in clean mudflats, green eel goby are found only in Sunchan Bay nowadays. <laughs> The presence of green eel gobi indicates that the mud flat is clean and healthy. Their eyes have shrunk, but they still retain a set of mean teeth. The green eel goby is nocturnal, but even at night it doesn't often show up on the flat, earning itself the nickname of the Hermit of Sunchan Bay. It makes several deep burrows in the mud and just pokes out its teeth to catch prey by creating a whirlpool. Green eel gobies are hung out to dry under the sun. They are rarely found in Korean markets because most of them are exported to Japan. The dried green eel gobi is a special treat even for Korean fishermen. These creatures have lived off the tidal flats for thousands of years. Compared to them, humans are newcomers to the flats. Mud flats represent these women's precious livelihood, so the mud boats are their important assets. 
The mud boat, also called nal in Korean, is made of dried cypress tree. It glides smoothly on the mud flat and is lightweight, making it quite portable. The mud flat permits human access twice a day without fail. The water receded Sinchan Bay stretches out for four kilometers. This mud flat is a community workplace for the locals. It provides honest earnings to those who believe in hard work. The mud sucks in the workers up to their waists, but these women have the know-how gained over a long time. Razor shells are noted for their concealment skills in the mud. Armed with a long, hard foot, the razor shells hide deep in the mud. These women have to plow the mud with their hands to find the breathing holes and quickly scoop up the razor shells before they dig even deeper. The plump razor shells are most prized when aged between a year and a half and three years. The mud flat takes care of its creatures and generously shares its bounties. This is why the locals can't help but be grateful for it. This old woman who raised her seven children by working in Sunchan Bay still makes her living on the mud flat. <laughs> On another side of the bay, women are busy collecting marsh clams. Marsh clams usually live where the fresh water and seawater meet, but this breed is found only in tidal flats. They're great for making rich tasting broth. The myriad of animals and plants living on the mud flat and the humans who live off of those small life forms have combined to create a unique tidal flat culture. Our geppolun seedulwa geppol seedmuldulman sanen ge anira sarami sanen gosijo. 그러니까 문화가 있는 거죠. 갯벌 문화가 비, 다른 데에서는 볼수 없는 우리만의 갯벌 문화가 아, 있는 거고 어촌 문화하고 또그 다른 독특한 갯벌 문화가 있는 거죠. Just as the sun rises in the morning, the tides ebb and flow on the flat in a timely manner. Tidal flats create inexplicable beauty by bringing together the coast and land. When the vast sea exposes what's hidden under the waves, the traditional fishing nets are revealed as well. This fishing technique makes use of the big difference between low and high tides. Poles are driven deep into the mud, and nets, which are taller than most adults, are hung between the poles. Round fish traps are placed below the nets to catch the fish that couldn't escape during the low tide. This local fisherman makes a living off the sea and mud flat. His fish trap is brimming with fat Spanish mackerels, as well as fresh crabs. He spots something he rarely sees. They're tiger crabs. Striped like its namesake, 
The tiger crab is Korea's indigenous species, not found anywhere else. The slow-moving tiger crab generally hides in the sand about five meters deep before attacking its prey. Its pincers are so powerful that they can crush the shells of blue crabs and sea snails in an instant. Much mending is required to maintain the nets passed down from his grandfather. Making a living from nature demands constant alertness and diligence. The fisherman lets go of the young fish and leaves the dead ones for the birds. He doesn't complain about how much the sea gives him. He's happy if he catches just enough to carry on his shoulders. <gasps> He's more than willing to share the catch with his neighbors. <laughs> The ever-changing scenery of the sea, the mudflats and the sky is mesmerizing. East Asian seepweed endures high salinity and its Korean name, Chilmyeoncho, comes from the fact that it changes color seven times, from green to red. The East Asian seepweed and other salt plants are a sight to behold. They form respective clusters, dutifully carrying out the natural purification job for the mudflat. There is an intriguing mudfield near the salt farm. Called the wild ginseng of tidal flats, the glass wart is packed with minerals and other healthy nutrients. This is why the glass wart has long been used as a magical ingredient in many cuisines. As the only briny plant on earth, glass wart has served as a natural seasoning. And it is counted among the healthiest ingredients used in French cuisine. It goes very well with fish or seafood, especially carp and lobster. C'est beaucoup associé aussi avec des poissons, rapport à salinité et à la mer. Principalement et aussi pas mal dans des, dans des salades. Cela dit, c'est quand même pas énormément utilisé. On retrouve beaucoup dans la gastronomie française parce que c'est un produit un peu méconnu et qui devient à nouveau connu. Oui, c'est devenu un peu un produit. Pas, comme c'est pas très connu, ça n'a pas été connu. Là, c'est un des produits un peu phares qu'on retrouve et beaucoup associé à des cuissons de, de poissons en fait. Favored for its crunchy texture, glasswort stalks are pickled or used in a salad. The flavorsome ingredient from mudflats has enriched mankind's diet. The tidal flat is like a gastronomic heaven for the seabirds and migratory birds. Migratory birds make annual visits to Gakshi Rocky Cliffs in the Yellow Sea. 
The rocky islet is a habitat for a flock of black-faced spoonbills. About a hundred spoonbills breed here every year. Since the mud flat is alive and well, it sees a variety of visitors. The first group of guests are seagulls, a fixture in any coastal area. The seagulls are waiting for lively and delicious Japanese ghost crabs. Far Eastern curlews have flown some 8,000 kilometers without a break. They have an amusing way of feeding on the crabs, eating the bodies first as a main course and then the legs as dessert. Eastern great egrets are the epitome of patience, waiting with poise for the right moment. In contrast, common green shanks scamper about ceaselessly to find food. The spoonbill is named for its flat, spatula-like bill, which is swung side to side to stir up the water. A single spoonbill is known to consume hundreds of ghost crabs a day. In spite of the bird's voracious appetite, ghost crabs still swarm the mudflat of Gangwa, demonstrating the mudflat's resilient life force. Healthy mudflats promise coexistence to all the species. That promise is what makes the spoonbills return to the tidal flat every year. Small creatures live and breathe in this place, rendered incredibly unique by the sun and the moon and the high and low tides. It's a place that celebrates the colorful diversity of life at the borders of the sea and land. This is the mud flat, the land of coexistence that has been and will continue to be preserved for many years to come.